and welcome to Office Hours with Dr. Dan. I'm Dan. Today's question is, should I go to college? And we can expand upon that to take college not just to mean a four-year university, but also Votech, vo trade school, community college. So if we look at the question is, should I go on and get some kind of formal education after I graduate high school? You know, there's a lot of this advice that's going to apply to that broad question, as well as the specific question of, hey, should I go to college? And the answer is, you know, I don't know, but here are some questions that you need to have answers to when you make that decision. And the primary one is, what are you going to do to support yourself if you don't go on to college or trade school or community college? How are you going to earn money to pay the bills? All right. Do you have a plan? Are you going to do landscaping? Are you going to do web design? Are you going to become an auto mechanic? You know, can you get a job with just a high school education in those fields? Some of them yes, some of them no. And have you tried to get a job in that field? So if it's something that you don't need a college degree for while you're in high school, have you tried to go out and get a part-time job working in that field, one, to get experience, two, to make sure you really want to do that for the good part of the rest of your life. And if you don't have experience in that field, it's kind of hard to be taken seriously once you get out of high school. You know, if you're in high school, people kind of know, okay, hey, you're not going to have experience. We'll hire this person on as a part-timer and see how they go, and maybe that's something that they can work into a full-time position after high school. I mean, is your age going to hold you back? In the United States, most people graduate from high school at 18. <clears throat> and yes, that's a legal adult. You can enter into contracts and things like that. But if you're going to have to go and try to take out loans or do a lot of traveling, your age could be uh, an issue. A lot of rental car companies don't rent to people that are under 25. Or if they do, it's, they have some kind of minimum. It's real hard to rent a car at 18. So is that going to be a problem with your business? Maybe yes, maybe no. Can you make enough money with whatever you've decided to do to pay the bills? And you know, the main theme of this video is earning the money you need to support yourself. If that's the whole thing of going out and finding a job. At some point you need to be able to support yourself, pay your own bills, have money set aside, for emergencies so you're not always running back to someone else to bail you out of situations. And how much money do you need to live? Different areas have different expenses, but you know, you're going to have food, clothing, shelter, transportation. You know, how much money do you need to be able to live comfortably? Uh, and everyone has a different definition of comfortably. And when you're younger, you can get away with uh, a lot less than as you get older and get more responsibilities and a family. And if you're in an area that is a very high cost of living, would it make sense for you to move someplace else with a lower cost of living to do what you want to do? Can you do that? Does it make sense? Maybe you've got your safety net, your family in this one high cost living area. Can you move someplace else? And maybe you're not going to have that safety net, but can you get by in another part of the country or another part of the state uh, better or more cheaply than where you live now. I mean, do you need a license to do what you want to do? I mean, if you want to be a plumber or a, a uh, HVAC technician or an electrician, most states require you to, if not have your own license, that you're working under a licensed pl um, plumber, electrician, HVAC technician, so you have to work for some other company, and they may have a training program or something like that, so those are options. If you want to do web design, I mean, you may need to get a business license in whatever state you're working in. So you need to know what are the legal requirements, and do you need a college degree for that? If you want to be a doctor, well, you're going to a physician, you're going to have to go to college, med school, and then every state has their licensing requirements. And another thing to look at is if you do decide to go to college, what will you do to support yourself after college? You know, just because you go to college and graduate is no guarantee that you're going to be able to find a job earning 
a living wage. You know, in this 2016 of this video is being filmed. There's you know things in the news about you know college graduates being unemployed or underemployed, and you know the, a lot of that is with the economy and a booming economy. There's less of that to worry about. But if the economy turns sour, regardless of whether you have or don't have a college degree, then it may be difficult to find a job. So if you go into college without some idea of what you want to do, why are you going to college, then that can be rough. You're not focusing your time and efforts. And as I've said in other videos, my view of going to college or tech school or community college is not to become well-rounded. It is to get the skills that you need to be able to find a job that you can support yourself with that knowledge that you've gained from going to all that school. So that is my philosophy and that's what governs this. So if you think, well, I want to go to school and I'm just going to go in and see what happens, I mean, that's worked for some people, but if you end up dropping out and not finishing and you've got all this debt, then that can, can be a problem. So like I say, you really need to have some kind of idea of what you want to do if you decide college is for you. Because if you have no idea and you pick a school and you go there and you think, well, I'll just kind of major in general studies and then, oh, well, maybe I'll be a chemistry major. You find out you don't like chemistry and then maybe I'll be a history major. You know, most schools have some core curriculum that's kind of the majority of freshman and sophomore year, but you are taking some classes in your major that particularly sophomore year. So if you're switching majors a lot, you could be putting more and more time in towards your college education. You won't be getting out in four years, and that means you're going to potentially take on more debt. And the more times you're uh, switching majors and extending your college career, the more chances there are that something's going to happen that's going to derail you, and you may not be able to finish your degree. And if you go in and pick a college and you don't really have an idea what you want to do and then you figure out, oh, well, I want to do this, well, maybe your college doesn't have a program on what you want to switch to, so you're going to have to transfer to another college. Not the end of the world, but realize that a lot of colleges require that you're, you spend your last two years there to get your degree. You're not going to be able to transfer in your senior year from one school to another and earn a degree. So you're going to have you may lose more time. And if you're transferring schools, especially if you're transferring from a school in one state to a school in another state, you may lose some of your credits. They may not transfer. So then you're going to have to again take more classes and that's going to extend your college career. And again, starting but not finishing college can be a whole lot worse than not even going to college in the first place because if you're going to college and you're taking out loans and you're taking on debt and you don't finish college, then how are you going to pay that debt back? And in the United States, as it stands right now, student loan debt is not something that you can get rid of by declaring bankruptcy. So that debt is going to be with you for the rest of your life conceivably. So it's very important that if you start something that you finish it so that you don't have to go into an employer and explain, well, I was going to school for three years and I quit with a year left. That's really tough to explain. An employer's going to be like, ooh, here's someone that got 75% of the way towards their degree and didn't finish it. And if you go in and you start your first semester of college and you figure, oh, this really isn't for me. I wasn't a big fan of school. I just kind of went to school because I felt like it was something I had to do. And this isn't going to work for me. That's a lot less hard to explain away than going for years and not coming out with some kind of degree. And on that note of not finishing, beware of going to for-profit schools. There are some good for-profit schools out there. There are some bad for-profit schools. There are some good non-profit schools. There are some bad non-profit schools. But for-profit, you know, they're there to make money and, you know, they can over-promise and under-deliver. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So regardless of whether uh, you're going to a for-profit or non-profit school, if there's any doubt about getting a job from that school when you're done, Figure out, well, where do I want to work? What do I want to do after school? And call those companies up. Call human resources up in those companies and see, uh, do they hire people from that school with that degree? You know, it gives you some kind of feeling that, okay, the, what the school is telling me is correct. So don't always trust what people are telling you. You know, 
trust, you know, not necessarily trust, but verify and still be suspicious. So if someone's telling you something, it's like, oh, our school is great. We have all this high placement. These people start off with these great jobs. Well, verify that. Do, you know, if you want to go work for Company X, call up HR and Company X and find out, do they hire people from that school? You know, in the past, you know, people after high school may go and join the military to get some skills and get money for college. And that could be an option uh, for you. Just remember that just because you're joining the military to get money for school doesn't mean that you couldn't end up in some bad situations, some dangerous situations. So before you go in and sign on the dotted line, make sure you realize what you're getting into. And that's if you're going in and say, okay, well, I'm going to learn these skills and then uh, I'm going to get this money for college. Well, remember, you know, I'm not a recruiter nor am I a lawyer, but you know, back in my day, the needs of the military or the service could outweigh anything that they promised you. So if they promised you that they're going to train you to be a computer repair technician, but by the time you get out of basic training, they don't need that many computer repair technicians. They could send you off to do something else. So just because you have you know, a contract uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that contract is going to always work in your favor as far as the military is going. And, you know, as far as the main thing to keep in mind, deciding whether or not to go to college or what some pursue some type of formal education after you graduate from high school is a big adult decision. You need to spend some time doing the research to find out what is best for you, not what other people want you to do, not what you think uh, would make someone else happy. What is going to be right for you, and then can you make a living off of doing whatever it is that you want to do after high school, whether that's something that requires you going on to formal education or not. You don't have to have your whole life mapped out. From, you know, Figuring out what you want to do at 18 is not going to carry you through your entire life because things are going to change. I'm not doing now what I thought I was going to be doing at 18. I'm not doing now what I thought I was going to be doing at 30. Things change. It's up to you to do the research so that you can make the best decision for you. So hopefully this helped. Take care and I'll see you later.